Welcome all of you. So today in the class of pharmaceutical inorganic chemistry, I welcome all of you again. Um, so we will be continuing with our unit one. In our previous class, we have discussed a few topics about unit one, which consisted of pharmacopoeia and impurities. All right. Like in our previous class, as I already said. we had discussed about two major topics of unit 1 which was pharmacopoeia and impurities in today's class we will be dealing with another very important topic which is limit tests see in our previous class itself we had highlighted about impurities what were impurities yeah what are impurities what are the sources of the impurities what are the types of the impurities and how could we control the impurities right in today's class we will be seeing that how do we limit these impurities there are a few there are number of analytical procedures which has been formulated number of guidelines which have been set up for controlling testing analyzing quantifying qualifying the impurities one of those procedures being limit test one of those procedures are limit test so in today's class we will be seeing what is a limit test first of all before knowing the types we need to understand what is a limit test what are the types of limit tests and how do we perform these limit tests so our today's class will consist of three major things what do you mean by limit test that is how we will try and understand a limit test after that we will see the types of limit test followed by we will see the procedures principles related to the few major types of limit tests so proceeding further limit test is defined as a quantitative or semi quantitative test limit test is defined as a quantitative or semi quantitative test designed to identify and control designed to identify and control small quantities of impurities small quantities of impurities which is likely to be present in the substance which is likely to be present in the substance what are the importance of these limit tests the importance of this limit test involves to find out the harmful amount of impurities okay importance of this limit test involves finding out harmful amount of impurities to find out avoidable and unavoidable amounts of impurities so <coughs> how is this limit test performed as i have told you what is a limit test it is defined as a quantitative or a semi quantitative test all right because it is known as a semi quantitative because we cannot exactly quantify the amount of impurity present in our substance it is simply a comparable system all right it is a comparable system what do we do in a limit test is we take a standard solution known quantity of standard solution and in another cylinder we take our test solution okay then we compare the test with that of the standard theek hai all right so we know the quantity of standard right we compare that to our test so the standard quantity is the limit is the permissible limit maximum permissible limit so this value is compared with that of our test so exactly we cannot quantify the impurity present in our test all we can give is a comparable value comparable value that is our test might contain certain amount of impurity more than the standard or less than the standard that's it all right so moving on further limit test involves the simple comparison of opalescence limit test involves the simple comparison of opalescence number 2 turbidity 
or color produced in test compared with that of the fixed standard compared with that of the fixed standard clear all of you as i have just explained to you here we take two cylinders one comprising of the test the other comprising of the standard one comprising of the test the other comprising of the standard standard we take known quantity of the impurity this known quantity is the permissible limit it is the permissible limit so then we will compare either the opalescence produced in the standard or the turbidity produced in the standard or the color produced in the standard with that of the test with that of the test clear all of you now moving on further what are the types of limit test what are the different types of limit test well limit test for chlorides limit test for sulfates limit test for iron limit test for arsenic limit test for lead limit test for heavy metals another very important type is modified limit test for chlorides and sulfates another very important type of the limit test is modified limit test for chlorides and sulfates now students all of you we will be discussing each of these types of limit test in detail in our upcoming classes i will be explaining to you the principle involved in each of the limit tests the procedures involved in each of the limit tests followed by the reactions which is very important the reaction which is happening in our procedure or in our system followed by the color change or turbidity or opalescence whatever be the significance so now moving on further we'll move on towards limit test for chlorides now before beginning the procedure for the limit test for chlorides i would like to highlight a very important thing what is the glassware used for the limit test what is the glassware used for limit test well the glassware used for a limit test is nestler cylinder it is a nestler cylinder a very important point which each each one of you need to notice a nestler cylinder is a sim single graduated cylinder which is extremely uh, see through it is extremely see through so that it would become easy for us to observe the change or the difference in color opalescence and turbidity in color opalescence and turbidity so a limit test most of the limit test i would say is performed using a nestler cylinder all right now let's look into the limit test for chlorides what is this limit test for chlorides what do we do here how do we perform the limit test for chlorides what are the reactions involved in the limit test for chlorides each one of them we will see point wise point now see now what do you mean by limit test for chlorides here what we do is we take two solutions one being standard nestler cylinder the other being test nestler cylinder all right in the standard cylinder we take the known quantity of chlorides we take the known quantity of chlorides which is permissible according to our pharmacopeia which is permissible according to our pharmacopeia all right next we move on to the test nestler cylinder where we take our sample which we need to check for chlorides in the test nestler cylinder what do we do we take first we take a standard cylinder next we take a test cylinder standard we will note it down as s test we note it down as t okay standard we take known quantity of standard solution known quantity of chloride ions in the test we take our unknown sample which we need to check for chloride ions okay next we add the reagents in the next step we add the reagents some equal reagents into both the cylinders all right then we make up the volume with distilled water till 50 ml the volume is made up to 50 ml using distilled water only uh, uh, never to mention nevertheless distilled water 
is the only form of water which has to be used for performing limit test because it is the purest form of water. It is the purest form of water. All right. So next, what do we do is upon adding the distilled water and the reagents, we will give it a quick stir and we will let it stand for little amount of time. Then we will observe the turbidity which is produced. Then we observe the turbidity which is produced. We compare, we compare the turbidity of the standard with that of the test. We compare the opalescence produced in the standard with that of the test. All right. If the opalescence produced in the test Nestle cylinder is more than that of the standard, if the opalescence produced in the test is more than that of the standard, then our sample fails the limit test for chlorides. Our sample would fail the limit test for chlorides. Otherwise, suppose if the opalescence produced in the standard is greater than that of the test, if the opalescence produced in the standard is more than that produced in the test, then what will happen? Then we can say that our test sample has passed the limit test for chlorides. We could say our test sample has passed the limit test for chlorides. Now, <coughs> What is this limit test for chlorides? This test is mainly used to control chloride impurity in an inorganic substance. This test is mainly used to control chloride impurity in an inorganic substance. The insoluble silver chloride, the insoluble silver chloride makes the solution opalescent. As I said, we compare the opalescence produced in the test with that of the standard. Now, the insoluble silver chloride makes the solution opalescent, which is compared with a standard opalescence produced in a standard solution containing known amount of chlorides. If the opalescence produced in the test is less intense, than that of the standard opalescence. Please note, if the opalescence produced in the test is less than the opalescence produced in the standard, the sample passes the limit test for chlorides and vice versa. The reaction involved here is, please pay attention, chloride ions, be it standard or chloride ions present in the sample, react with silver nitrate, chloride ion reacts with silver nitrate in the presence of dilute nitric acid. In the presence of dilute nitric acid, that is in an acidic medium, to form silver chloride, AgCl, silver chloride ion, to form AgCl or silver chloride ion. This silver chloride produces it is insoluble. Since it is insoluble, it produces opalescence. It produces opalescence. Alright? So, this is the principle for limit test for chlorides. If my sample would contain chloride, it will react with the reacting agent AgNO3 to form silver chloride. To form silver chloride. The reagents used, the reagents used in this limit test for chloride is dilute nitric acid, dilute nitric acid. Nitric acid is added in the limit test of chloride to make the solution acidic and it helps the silver chloride to precipitate and make the solution turbid. Alright, so this is the use of nitric acid. Please focus upon the use of each of the reagents which are being applicable here. Next, it also dissolves the unwanted impurities like carbonates, sulfates and phosphates. It also provides common ion effect. The next substance which is used in a limit test for chloride is 
silver nitrate which is our reagent which is our reagent fall followed by finally sodium chloride please note the value of sodium chloride this is very important this is a permissible value of sodium chloride which is used as a standard 0.05845% weight by volume solution of sodium chloride is used as a standard here now i will show you step by step procedure for the limit test of chlorides we take two nestle cylinders the reaction as we have already seen chloride reacts with agno3 and gets converted into agcl so first one of the nestle cylinder will be test and one would be standard first we take 1 ml nitric acid in both the test tubes then we take 15 ml of sample this being our test we take 15 ml of sample here and here we take 10 ml of standard solution here we take 10 ml of standard chloride solution along with 5 ml of water volume please make sure we need to maintain volume has to be same in both the tubes finally we will add our reagent silver nitrate in both our tubes in both our nestle cylinders then we observe for turbidity next we observe for turbidity here if you see the turbidity produced in the test is less than the turbidity present in the standard turbidity present in the test is less than the turbidity produced in the standard hence we can say our sample passes the limit test for chlorides so here we could say our sample passes the limit test for chlorides moving on further towards limit test for sulfates what is the principle for limit test for sulfates beta principle is almost similar for every limit test like for chlorides we compared opalescence here we will compare turbidity okay this test is designed to control sulfate impurities primarily in inorganic substance it is based upon the chemical reaction between barium chloride and soluble sulfates present in the presence of dilute hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid provides an acidic medium the turbidity produced is compared with the turbidity which is produced in a standard as we as uh, we have mentioned for limit test for chloride the turbidity produced in the sample is compared with that of the standards even in this limit test for sulfates <coughs> okay the sample passes the limit test for sulfates if the turbidity in the sample solution turbidity in the sample solution is less than that of the standard solution okay now what is the reaction involved here see sulfates soluble sulfates react with barium chloride react with barium chloride in the presence of dilute hydrochloric acid to form barium sulfate which is insoluble and produces turbidity this produces turbidity this produces turbidity okay so this is the overall reaction for limit test of sulfates now we will see what happens in the limit test for sulfates step by step we will see what happens in the limit test for sulfates see here again we take two nestle cylinder again we will take two nestle cylinder here the reaction as we say as i told you already sulfate react with barium chloride to form barium sulfate to form barium sulfate barium sulfate here produces turbidity this produces turbidity all right now so let us see what happens in the reaction this being our test and this being our standard okay this is our test nestle cylinder this is our standard nestle cylinder in our test nestle cylinder we take 1 ml of sample similarly in our standard nestle cylinder we take 1 ml of standard sulfate solution we take 1 ml of standard sulfate solution then to our test we will add 2 ml of nitric acid 2 ml of nitric acid similarly we will add 2 ml of nitric acid to our standard followed by distilled water 
we make up the volume in both the Nestler cylinder 245 ml with distilled water. We will add distilled water to both the test tubes, 45 ml of distilled water. After that, we will make up the volume, we will add our reagent. What is our reagent? Barium sulphate. We can add our reagent, which is barium sulphate reagent. Now, so this will now produce turbidity. You can see this will now produce turbidity. We compare this turbidity produced in the test with that of the <coughs> standard. We compare the turbidity produced in the test with that of the standard. As you all can see, turbidity produced in the test is less than that of the standard. Alright? So, our sample here passes the limit test for sulphates. Sample passes the limit test for sulphates. Now, what are the reagents used here? What are the reagents used? Well, the reagents used in the limit test for sulphate is, number one, dilute hydrochloric acid. Why do we use dilute hydrochloric acid is to maintain an acidic environment. To keep the solution acidic, we need dilute hydrochloric acid. It also increases the sensitivity of the test. This hydrochloric acid is also used for increasing the sensitivity of the test up to some limit. For increasing the sensitivity of the test. Next, the next reagent used here is barium sulphate reagent. Please notice carefully in our reaction we said our sulphates react with barium chloride, right? But here I am saying that we use barium sulphate reagent. Well, this reagent is a combination of three things. Number one, barium chloride. Number two, potassium sulphate. And number three, number potassium sulphate, barium chloride and ethanol. It is a mixture of three things. Potassium sulphate, barium chloride and ethanol. Okay. Ethanol prevents supersaturation of our compound Okay, it increases sensitivity for our test and finally, why do we use barium sulphate reagent is, how do we make it is, mix 15 ml of 0.5 molar barium chloride with 55 ml of distilled water. To this 20 ml of sulphate free alcohol is added. Okay, and 5 ml of 0.0181% weight by volume, very little amount of potassium sulphate is used very little amount. This increases the sensitivity for the test. Okay. It provides sulphate ions into our solution just at the beginning of the test. Next, we make up the volume to 100 ml with distilled water and mix it. It should always be prepared fresh. Alright. So, please note down, please remember this barium sulphate reagent has to be prepared fresh for limit test for sulphates, for performing limit test for sulphates. Alright? <coughs> so, what did we see here is, number one, the reagent used for limit test for sulphate is barium sulphate reagent. Barium sulphate reagent. This is pretty important. We need to understand what is this barium sulphate reagent. As I have already mentioned to you all now, Barium sulphate reagent is a combination of three chemicals, three things which is potassium sulphate in a very small quantity, potassium sulphate in a very little quantity, number two barium chloride, barium chloride which is used for reacting with sulphates to produce insoluble barium sulphates, to produce insoluble barium sulphate. Next, we use alcohol. We use alcohol. Okay. So, these are the three reagents which make up our barium sulphate reagent. So, here uh, we have already seen the limit test for sulphates, limit test for chlorides. In our next class, we will look into the limit test other of iron.